It's hard to think of a better career debut than for a 25-year-old solicitor from London, who in 1894 was duly elected as the founding captain of the club, and the following year was commissioned to design the initial 18-hole routing on the Linksland at Rye. Harry Colt, who had become England's most prolific and influential golf course architect, and whose work here sets the stage for the story that is Rye Golf Club. For a club synonymous with traditions, which enjoys a staple diet of two ball play and foursomes golf, its less than traditional par 68 is extremely challenging for the metal golfer. Only one par 5 early in the round gives the lower handicapper little scope to gain ground, and Rye's magnificent assortment of par 3 holes are some of the most challenging you will face against the prevailing breeze, often to treacherous and elevated greens. The greens themselves are revered across the British Isles and, combined with slippery runoffs, swales and unique features, scrambling for par is where the course poses its biggest question to the golfer. The big thing with Rye, however, are these special relationships that seem to exist and its story is not complete without mention of Bernard Darwin, a figure who transcends the game of golf in Britain in those booming years and having lived a career as the world's foremost golf travel writer for the Times, took up accommodation at the old Dormy House in 1956, following the death of his wife, and is where he lived the remainder of his years. Yet his legacy lives on, and the leather armchair bequeathed to him by his famous grandfather, Charles Darwin, still sits by the bay window of the bar today. The evolution of Rye is also significant to the story, as it has adapted to its ever-changing environment. Taking advantage of the receding sea levels, the course was lengthened in 1907, and in later years this also made the development of the second course possible, the Jubilee. The increased use of the motor car in the early 20th century meant the road boundary became an ever-increasing obstacle for the club. Again, something which Rye also solved for in 1932, with the help of Tom Simpson. Throughout its history, many others have had a hand in shaping the current routing, which is still lauded by modern greats, including Tom Doak as a shiny example for today's students. The way it works with the topography, in harmony with its natural surroundings across a narrow parcel of land, is inspired, and the sharp dunescape ridge that cuts across the property is integral to the design and the course's identity as you play along, over and around it, providing intrigue and excitement without ever compromising on the integrity of the challenge. Combined with its menacing yet beautifully rumpled fairways, at a mere 6,300 yards on the card, Rye might just be the toughest course you will play off this distance today. The course also benefits from its southerly location and, with thanks to its robust turf, is renowned as the finest example of all year round golf in the UK. Its proximity to the French coastline, however, has meant that the club has been shaped by wartime events, something which is also central to its own evolution. And while it was said that gunfire on the Western Front could be heard from the links, the club was relatively uninhibited by World War I. However, the Second World War saw the front line commandeered and used to defend against potential enemy invasion, and the clubhouse was all but destroyed by bombing in 1944. But, owing to its committed membership, the club rose up in the face of adversity to ensure that Rye continued to thrive for future generations. The club has many special relationships with the wider golfing world, and despite being a private club, generously plays host to a number of societies throughout the year. One of its most famous and special relationships is perhaps the Oxford and Cambridge Golf Society who, among other events, play their annual tournament, the President's Putter, at Rye every January. And the tournament's 100 year history has seen amateur golfing greats like Cyril Tolley, Roger Weatherhead and Donald Steele all win the honour of hanging their ball from the putter which adorns the clubhouse walls following a brutal and arduous match play marathon played out on the links. The President's Putter is, in many ways, the personification of Rye itself. 
an idiosyncratic tournament which celebrates pace of play just as much as its victor. With up to eight matches played by the ultimate winner over a period of four days. Play is fast. The quality of golf is fine. Convivial, yet intensely competitive. And with the same focus on enjoyment off the course as well as on it. For this golf club, on the south coast of England, it is perhaps the living embodiment of what Rye is all about. Serious fun.